Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas Day 11. Today we are going to be entering the third dimension and talking a bit about voxel cubes. Today's video will be a bit different in that I'm going to give you almost all of the code for the voxel cube. You can stop the video at any point when you want to continue the challenge on your own, but your ultimate goal is to fit it into 256 bytes with two axes of rotation and to have some kind of effect on it similar to the plasma in this picture. So this is where this video will take us. Um, since the code is so incredibly similar, I'm only going to do the explanation in the tick 80 part um, because I find it easier to type and read in tick 80 than Pico 8. And then I will talk to the Pico 8 specific parts of the code in that section. In tick 80, you can sort things, but in Pico 8, you have to bring your own code for that. So we're just going to talk about that quickly. And there are, of course, CPU constraints on the Pico 8. So your rotating cube might have to be a little smaller, but that's not a big deal. Small is good here. As usual, we'll be starting with the tick 80, but again, keep in mind that the explanation of the code will only be in this section, and then we'll only talk about the Pico 8 specific bit after that. So now we're gonna talk about a basic setup for doing our 3D. I have cleared the screen, I have a T value that represents the time, and I am using a Lua table to store X, Y, and Z values for my point. So since we're now working in 3D, we need a Z value as well. So X and Y in Lua, we're familiar with going from left to right, and we're familiar with Y going from top to bottom, but Z is going into the screen in the positive direction. So um, if we think of something moving away from us forward, that is the direction of the Z axis here. And that is just purely based on our calculations and it makes it easier for us to have Z going that direction. Um, so this Lua table allows me to group these three variables together into one entity. And we can have a, a point as a single table, but then we can also due to the way Lua works, we can have a table of tables so we can have a bunch of points stored together and that bunch of points would eventually make up our cube. So um, I'm just printing this point to the screen. I just have this picks function call and it's going to add 120 on the X and 68 on the Y so that it's centered um, that the 0, 0, 0 axis is going to be the center of the screen. So if I run this, you'll see that that is pretty much the center of the screen and we have our 10, 10 um, coordinates here for the X and the Y value. So how do we actually get this into 3D? And this, the way we get this into 3D is we divide it by the Z value. And that what that Z value does is the bigger that Z value gets when you divide it by point dot X, the bigger or the smaller that number is. So let's, um, make y equal to a thousand here and if i run it you'll see that that's off over here and again a thousand divided by 10 is 100 and that's about 100 pixels from the center and as we increase the depth in the z here so um 10 20 30 40 50 you see that this approaches the center and the exact same thing will happen if i put it up for the y-axis as well. Maybe make that 500. And as I increase that depth, so that's it moving away from us, it converges on that center point. So the bigger Z gets, the smaller the result of this, and the closer that gets to the center point. And again, if you've ever like looked at a, a row of trees and walked past them um you, if they're off to one side as the trees go back they move into the center so that's how the perspective works and it's incredibly simple to get we just divide it by the z point now we'll always want to make sure that we don't end up with any zeros here um when we're doing our perspective zeros where we're, we our, our viewpoint is so where we're standing so we want to make sure that when we're working with this we don't get any zeros in the Z and again that's because we're going to be dividing by Z and we don't want to end up dividing by zero. After making a few changes here and I'm after creating a table called points and that is going to be a table of tables essentially. It is going to create have a bunch of these points added to it here. So I've created three for loops and they are going to iterate through the 
x, y, and z values for our cube. And because we're going from minus 25 to 24 in steps of six, and minus 24 to 24 in steps of six for the x, y, and z axis, that is going to create a cube for us. And again, similar to when we drew the shade bob, the x and y um, value, we're now essentially doing that, but in 3D. So table.insert allows me to add something to a table. I have to specify the name of the table and I'm giving it the x, y, and z value. So this is similar to the point value that we created before. X is the, the key or the, uh, the identifier. And then X is taking this from the loop. Y is taking it from the loop and Z is taking it from the loop. A bit confusing because they're X and X, but um, the left-hand side is the identifier and the right-hand side is the variable. And I'm adding 400 to push it back off the screen. So this code creates my cube for me. And now I am going to iterate over each one of those points that have been added as the cube. And I can do that with a for loop. Now tables in Lua are one indexed, which means they start at one and they go up to the number of items in the table. And again, you can access that by putting the hash sign in front of the name. And again, that is inclusive. And then down here, I have my picks function, but I've made a slight change to it that it's printing out the current point. So points I, and if I run this, I will get a square. Now that's great because I want a cube. A square is kind of there, but it's um it's very small. So what's happening is I'm taking these values like 24, 24 as the x, y, z values and dividing them by 400 and they're getting really small. Now I want to instead scale this. So I'm just going to multiply the points value. So I'm going to essentially multiply the x value that I'm getting back by 600 and now you can see that we're starting to get something that resembles a cube. We have our picks in the top right hand corner moving back along here. And that essentially gives us our cube. And so now I'm after changing that from a pixel to a circle. And I'm after adding a second for loop that is going to draw those circles as a set of shaded circles. So it's going to draw three circles and it's going to offset each circle by a fraction of j. It is going to decrease the radius and is going to decrease the color. And that gives us this um, effect on our voxels. You might notice that things look a bit weird. The This guy should be printed at the, should be ahead of this guy, but these are the ones at the back and the ones at the back are being printed first and they're being, are, they're being printed last over the previous ones. So this cube is being drawn backwards. And one of the reasons for that is that our cube is created starting with minus Z value. And the minus Z values are then the first things that are inserted. So our cube is drawn. And again, it's starting with the, the negative values and the negative values are coming back towards us. So they're the things that get drawn first and then the positive ones, which is the furthest away from us, get drawn last. So how do we rectify this? And basically tick80 has a convenient built in sort function and we are going to insert it here um, after we've set up the cube, but before we draw it, we just need to do a sort. So this is table.sort and it's built in Lua functionality in tick80 that allows you to pass it a table of points and give it a sort function. In this case, we're checking the Z value to see which one is bigger. And if A is bigger than B, we're returning true. Otherwise we're returning false. So let's take a look at this now. If I run my program, everything is sorted properly. And we have our um, top left, bottom right, outer ones drawn first. So now we're gonna talk about rotation. And here is a function that I've prepared earlier on rotation and it will rotate around the z-axis. It will take a point and it will take an angle and it will do the required translation. So this is rotating around the z-axis. So z stays the same. The x needs to be multiplied by the cos of the angle. And then we subtract um, y times the sine of the angle. And we do the same for the y value. And this is xt stands for the transform value of x. yt stands for the transform value of y. 
and ZT. You, you can figure that bit out, uh, the transform value of Z. So these are the um, equations that are going to rotate this for us. And again, they're very similar to the rotations that we used on days eight and nine, but it's just that we have to add that extra dimension to them now because we're working in 3D. So to use this function then, and again, the code for this is um, provided on the day 11 website. So before I insert the point to the table, I am going to use uh, PT for point transformed, and I am going to call the function rotate Z. I'm going to pass this guy in, X equal to X, Y equal to Y, Z equal to Z. And I'm going to give it the angle. Now, I don't have any value for angle here, so I'm just going to create one, angle equals zero, and down here, angle equals angle plus 0 0.01. And then instead of inserting these into the table directly, I'm going to use pt.x, pt.y, and pt dot z. So now we have rotated that. Let's run it and see what happens. We now have a voxel cube that rotates around a single axis, which is the z axis. And we have the code for two more of these functions. We can also rotate the x axis and you'll see the x axis stays the same. The others then move and we have the y axis. So we've rotate x, and rotate y. So let's take a look at rotate y. And you see the y axis is from top to bottom here. So it's rotating around that point. The x axis is then rotating around that axis. And we can stack multiple of them. So I can say pt, PT equals rotate y and I can just give it PT and an angle. And now our voxel cube is rotating on two axes. The challenge is to get this into 256 bytes with two axes of rotation, but um, some things might be a problem. The functions may be too large in terms of um, the characters that they use for compression. Um, and the other part of it then is to use this voxel cube as some kind of a demo platform in itself. So in the example at the start, you saw the plasma effect on it. When we divide the points.x divided by points.z, that gives us an x and y value. We can pop those in to the tunnel equation. We can pop those into the plasma equation and we can use these to create a nice effect on top of our 3D voxel cube. So the code for the tick 80 and the pico 8 is almost identical. Obviously, I've changed the tick function to be the draw function. Everything else along here has remained the same. I've reduced the number of points in the pico 8 version because we wanted to run at 30 frames per second. So I had to reduce that. Um, we have our rotation functions. Uh, Pico8 doesn't use table.insert, it has an add function, which is much nicer and saves us some space, but it does uses the exact same, um, it has the exact same parameters. So instead of circ, then I'm using circ fill in Pico8, everything else is the same. And instead of the table.sort in tick80, I'm using this zsort function on the points. And that Z sort function is up here. And essentially what this is doing is iterating over every point in the array. And it is checking to see if the one next to it is greater than that. <clears throat> and it's swapping it and it's iterating it over that again. So this is a basic kind of bubble sort that we're using here. There are probably some more efficient algorithms that you could look up if you feel the need that and use them instead of this. But this is a quick solution when there is no sort available. And if we run this, you see that we get 30 frames per second. 
and all of our points are sorted. So as you can see, we're already at 430 compressed bytes in Pico 8. So this is going to be a particularly tough challenge because the compression types between Pico 8 and Tick 80 are different. And there is a lot of potential things that you can do here to reduce the size. You could just use um, single points instead of that. You can reduce the number of rotations. You can inline the rotation code so that it doesn't so that it doesn't so it doesn't need a full function. And you could, depending on how you're feeling, you could remove the sorting altogether and you could just use points or something like that and the individual pixels instead of the circles. So the first challenge is to get the voxel cube up and running and with some kind of demo effect on it. And the second one is to get it packed to 256 bytes. There is a lot of nice tips and tricks out there for Pico 8 that you can try, but depending on how hard this is, we may have to revise the challenge. So just check out the website for any updates. And the full code for the Pico 8 and the Tech 80 version is on the website.